So, she's a chieftain, eh? Do I have to fight something to prove it? That's usually why people come to the Snow Chance. But I don't doubt your right to the title. Not after all I've heard about you. You may take the trials. Even the chieftain's trial, if that's your wish. You look like you've got some stories to tell. Oh, I outlived most of my stories. I ran with the Thunder's daughters long ago before they ran their course. For a time, we shook the snow off the men of Benor. I couldn't last. Some fell in glorious battle. Some were exiled in infamy. Still glorious, if you ask me. Others had a worse fate. What's worse? To grow old. And find that all the rules and traditions you fought so hard against are still there. That's why I tell all the hunters I trained to stay young. How do the trials work around here? There's no Karja medals. I had some, but I used them to patch up holes in my snow boots. Instead, you'll compete against the best times set by other Banuk hunters. To take second place, even third place, puts you among names of legend. What if I come in first? We'll see. I'm guessing you're not part of the Hunter's Lodge. Every tribe claims they were the first to have hunting grounds. And every tribe claims the Karja stole it from them. So who was the first? We were. And the Karja stole it from you. That's right. Choose a trial and I'll tell you what it entails. The control trial tests a hunter's ability to rein in the Storm Slinger's power. Only the wisest understand these shamanic weapons, and only the bravest wield them. It begins after you descend that rope to the arena. We'll need a moment to pull the machines from the pass into the arenas. Then make your descent. Very well, we'll call the the control trial. Only the wise will stop. We'll need a moment.
third place. The control trap only the wise. If you're prepared, we'll need a moment to. Next time. The control try only the one. I'll start counting after you. We'll need a moment. Second, the control trial. Only the one. Use the rope. We'll need a.
place. The control took only the wisest understand. Use the rope to get to the we'll need a moment. You took first place by the throat. Before you, it was unheard of for an outlander to perform so well. The Onslaught Trial challenges a hunter to withstand the ebb and flow of combat. Machines will be released into the arenas in waves. Pace yourself. Strategize. Only then will you be able to defeat them all without being overwhelmed. The Onslaught Trial Machine only then We'll start when you hit the snow at the bottom of that. We'll need a moment to pull the machines from the past. I'll save the shooting for down in the hunting ground.
Conquered it on your first run and didn't even make it look difficult. I swear it on the ice. You're as good as any Vanuk champion. The Chieftain's Trial is a challenge that will push even the mightiest hunter to their limits. Only the largest, most dangerous machines will be loosed into the arenas. Learn their weaknesses quickly, and do what you can to exploit them. To best them and survive, that is an ordeal worthy of a chieftain. We'll start when you hit the snow at the bottom of that rope. We'll need a moment to pull the machines from the pass into the arenas. Then make your descent.
Third place on your first attempt. That's true. You shouldn't be underestimated. The Chieftain's Trial is a challenge that will push even the mightiest hunter to their limits. Only the largest, most dangerous machines will be loosed into the arenas. Learn their weaknesses quickly, and do what you can to exploit them. To best them and survive. I'll start counting. We'll need a moment.
You have the third best time. Want to improve it? I'm done with training right now. And training's done with you. Are you up for more? Do you ever get tired? I'll rest someday. Not today. Another time, Ikri. Sure. You know where to find me. Unless Lovok throws me out for making the other hunters look bad. Please will keep.
much for being careful. We brought a first timer on the hunt today. Right on. Hey. Blue gleam will make some shaman happy.
fistful of wood that is worth braving the cold. I'm gonna go to the top this one. Good hunters in this we're at. Happy to count myself among them. Initut told you the truth. This is the headdress stolen from the murdered man. You'll find more in a ravine north and west of here, along with the bodies of the killers. The exile still served its purpose. He was guilty of our suspicion. Fate has fallen like snow, and should Initut return, he will be absolved. You can't be serious. He speaks for the Warwick, my Nora friends. You look ridiculous. If you would return to my Wirak, you will behave as a Banuk does. How does a Banuk behave, my chieftain? Like I did? Accepting a sentence for a crime he did not commit. Or those others who killed in cold blood for crimes that their carge of victims did not. I think what I wear will not make me more or less of a Banuk. For his own sake, it would be wise for him to think less, Nora friend. I'll talk to him, but not for you. If we scrub the entire rock face clean, and, and, and why? Just so she could cover it and paint again? I defied my chieftain's will, spurned my Warwick. How are you feeling? As if I've been pounded the guts. I could just keep walking, but when my anger has thawed, it will leave me with nothing. Where else would I go? You can decide for yourself what it means to be a Banuk. It might not be what the Chieftain and the Shaman tell you. Whether you stay with this Warak or find another... I'm better with decisions like, do I start with the left or the right? There's more to you than your fists, Inatut. That's why I believed you. It was my chieftain who taught me honesty. He said, a Banuk should not be treacherous when the ice is treacherous enough. I'll sit with my bruises for a time, then talk with her again. As for you, Nora girl, Will you accept this gift? A, a little scrawny weight against the great boon you gave me, but... I'm honored. Thank you, Inatut. I care to travel south. I'd not get much further than the Grave Horde. Bergrind, 
How'd your investment pay out? Quite handsomely, thanks very much. Do you know those three crazy Banuka calling themselves the Scars of the North now? <laughs> well, now that I have those parts, I can pay off a debt of my own. So they've gone south then? Aye, that they have. I've got a friend in the Sundom by the name of Otour. He owes me a favor. Old Otour is a machine scavenger. A pretty competent one. So I sent them to learn from the best. Or at least from the pretty competent. Well, we work with the resources we have. Speaking of which, here, a token of my gratitude. It's been a long day. And all I want is to stare into the fire and lose myself. When Sakuli's finished, you'll be able to see her painting from...
watching me. Safe, for a few minutes anyway. Outlander, it would be my honor to speak with you. I wish you good fortune. We could all use them. I've heard of you, Huntress. Each of the many verses of your song tells of an impossible victory. The notes echo across the cut. You shouldn't believe everything you hear. That I know. My song used to echo around Banur. Umnak, the hunter of legendary machines. That's why I'm here. For another. They call it the Claws Beneath. Or they did when I was younger. Its defeat would have given my song a fine end. I, uh, I used to travel between Banur and the Cut without stopping to sleep. But this trip... My bones ache, Huntress. But you, out hunting Aratak, leading your own Werak. If half your song is true, you are the only hunter I trust to go in my place. You want me to hunt for you? Not just for me, no. For an old friend. You want me to hunt in your place? Is that some kind of Banuk custom? Well, perhaps it should be, but no. We survive and we prevail. Until we fail to do either. 
I confess, this is not easy for me. For any other machine, I would die as I have lived. A Banu Hunter, weapon raised. But too many good lives have been lost to the claws. Throwing my old corpse atop the pile accomplishes nothing. Better to live in a world without the claws than to die while it still makes children orphans. Sounds like you've got a reputation. To be Banuk is to push your body to its limits. I found my limits higher than most. Fearsome machines needed killing, and in my youth, I found I had a talent for killing them. Even now, my name carries such weight that when the claws beneath re-emerged, the Werak came to me. Do you still have the same faith in yourself that your Werak seems to have? Perhaps I did. Before I held my bow in shaking hands. Noticed, for the first time, the spots on my knuckles. What a strange thing it is to be old. To stare backward and see such distance. But to stare forward at a looming wall. This machine, the claws beneath. Why travel all the way to the cut just to hunt it? Some songs. They include a refrain. The return of a past moment. It seemed fitting. You've hunted this thing before. Must have been twenty winters past. We were so close to bringing the claws to bay. Closer than anyone else ever got. We? Me. And my friend. He was a chieftain of my Werak then. A skilled hunter. Every few years the claws would emerge in a new location. I knew of two chieftains he'd sent to their burial pyres. My friend became the third. This hunt. I had hoped to complete it in his honor. This is obviously important to you, Umnak. Are you sure you want someone else to take down this machine? Well, I am no longer a match for the claws beneath. If I ever was. If I face it, it will kill me. Of this I have no doubt. The Banuk blood in my veins screams at me to take on the claws myself. But I must see it brought down. And dead men see precious little. All right, Umnok. I'll do what I can. I've no doubt you can do quite a lot. The stories say the claws beneath returns here only once every six winters. The whispers I've heard say it now makes its home on the northeast edge of the cut. Huntwell. Wait. I fought a rockbreaker not far from here. It had Banuk spears sticking from its back. That's it. That's the claws beneath. Tell me, does it still live? It wasn't easy, but I took it down. By the blue light. I knew you were a formidable huntress. But you surpass my expectations. Here. To show my gratitude. Yes, fine. Spend all your shards on fancy weapons. Without real skill, the they're as useful as carja silk. How many tried to take it down before you? The machine spirits may be restless now. You're Aloy, right? My pop... Burgund, I mean, told me you might be heading up to see me. Varja, pleasure. Hey, that spear is really something. You've customized her, haven't you? I've made a change or two. You've got an eye for weapons. I wish these Banuk agreed with you. I can't seem to sell scrap to a Glentalk around here. Everyone wants boring old bows and spears. I like the more unusual stuff. And the Banuk can get unusual. Like that spear Aratok hauls around? An ice rail. Ooh, or that weapon of Araya's? What I wouldn't give to poke around inside one of those. Feel the lightning on my fingers. Or inside of anything, really. Last commission I had was a month ago. A weapon that spat fire. That didn't go well. I've got an ice rail, just like Aratox. You want to take a look? I are you serious? Y yes, yes, I love that. Okay. Mm. 
Obvious design flaw. So if I replace these... Yeah, that should... <sighs> right. So, believe it or not, she's operating at... Let's be generous. Half her potential. What's with the she's? <laughs> oh. Pop says all weapons are girls. I don't think he realizes it's a compliment. Uh, well, listen. If we had a Thunderjaw's mandibles to work with, her gears would be well and truly greased. And I know where to find one, if you want to go hunting with me. Remind me what we need to fix up this thing? That Thunderjaw's mandibles will do it. So, let's say someone you know happened to have a weapon like Araya's. You don't. See for yourself. Of course. Look at the... So the coils generate the spark, but the power source isn't even bolted in. I won't lie, she's beautiful. But there's beautiful and then there's beautiful. What we need is a Stormbird Talon. Lightning flows over them like water off a goose. And I know where one is. Hunt it with me, I'll turn that weapon into your new best friend. And second best. You're sure you can fix up this thing? You bet. Probably. Just need that Stormbird Talon. A weapon that spits flame, huh? Like this one? I took this thing off an Osaron bandit. Think you could do anything with it? <laughs> you got my forge fire back? Well, if you took down Olgrid and his goons for this thing, I guess she's yours now. Why don't you finish it for me first? Make it... make her into the weapon she was supposed to be. Thought you'd never ask. I'm gonna need a Bellowback snout. Any Bellowbacks will do. Can you handle it alone? I think I can manage that. This forge fire of yours... What do you need to finish it up? Like I said, a Bellowback snout ought to do it. I'm not picky. So we need parts from a Stormbird and a Thunderjaw? And you know where to find them. That's right. It's gonna take some traveling, though. We can find a Thunderjaw out in the Valley Meet, and a Stormbird roost near the Free Heat. I'll pack and meet you out there. This will be fun. Okay. Yes, fine. Spend all your show. Fancy weapons. Without real skill, they're as useful as car just... I'll do what I have to.
That should do it. Varja can finish her forge fire now. You know, I kind of missed all this red dust. Well, there's our Stormbird. When you're ready, I'll follow up and boom.
Far just said she could improve the Storm Slinger with us. Got that part you need. Perfect. Already got machine oil on my hands. Okay, Varja, let's move on. <laughs> you don't want to catch some of that Karja sun? Nah, you're right.
Sure feels good to be out of knee-deep snow. So, we've got a thunder drop. I'm ready to do this. On your lead. Just should be able to fix up the ice wall. Not too much already. Found the part. Ready to fix up that weapon? I am always ready to fix up a weapon. Never thought I'd be glad to see the inside of a Thunderjaw's mouth. I sure am. Every machine's a big box of tools. Once they stop trying to kill you, that is. Trust me, Aloy. You won't recognize this ice rail when I'm through. There. Oh, she's perfect. A spear's a spear, right? Poke slash done. Boring. 
I adjusted the chill water flow, rebalanced here, strapped on a launcher, and now she shoots freezing spikes. Ta-da! You weren't kidding. More beautiful, more powerful. That's my guarantee. You've done good work with this weapon, Barja. Told you I was good. Anyway, I'm glad she's in your hands. Here it is. One Stormbird Talon. Let's do it. I haven't had this much fun in ages. Watch and learn, Aloy. Only, don't stare directly at the sparks. <clears throat> okay, so I pretty much had to break her in half. But what's a staff? A stick. One thing I like about sticks, you can put them back together however you want. Which you did. This thing looks a whole lot more dangerous. She's better than dangerous. She's a genuine Varja special now. Take good care of her. What you did to that storm slinger? That was some impressive work, Varja. Hey, it's nothing. I just helped her become what she was always meant to be. They grow up so fast. I've got what you asked for. Show me what you had in mind for the forge fire. Finally! Was feeling like I neglected her. And that's a little too close to my family life. She's done and she's yours. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. It looks great. I almost expected you to turn it into a burning rope caster or something. Nah, she was close to perfect from the start. She's a Varja original after all. Thanks, Varja. These three weapons are fine work. Are you kidding? I can't remember when I had this much fun. I should be thanking you. I'm the one walking away with the weapons, aren't I? Seems wrong to charge you for giving me an opportunity to do what I love doing. Don't tell Pop I said that. Here, whenever I tinker with weapons, I go through fistfuls of this stuff. Maybe you'll get some use out of it. Aloy, how are those weapons treating you? They've done right by me so far. Glad to hear it. Return the favor, yeah?
with their ridiculous ideas about women, how many great warriors have they ignored? Long Notch right. is well stocked, Glad as you feet. asked. And Steady. our scouts are watching for more frost claws. Our numbers rise. Three more hunters have passed their trials. But our purpose was to take back the mountain. Now what? Stay prepared. Sharpen your spears. Should we not return, defending the cut falls to you. If our chieftain agrees with this course. Sounds like good advice, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. Chieftain? The weight of command is no small burden. I can see that. I take it you haven't spoken to Araya yet? Why should I? This is what she wanted, to return to Thunder's Drum. It is her only care. So I should have known she would find a way to push aside my spear. After the Karja took my sister, not all of her came back. What happened to Araya when she was a captive of the Karja? As a shaman, she's adept with machines, tracking them, stunning them. The Karja used her to capture them for the Sunring, where they were unleashed upon the innocent. They made her part of their blood sport. The shame she suffered beneath their pitiless sun. She survived. She endured. Endured by reminding herself of the spirit, her purpose. But now that's all she has. Tell me what happened to the first expedition. Rhea led the way to the summit, but it was blocked by a great door. Some kind of cauldron, new metal. We tried to break through, but it was unflinching. We were exhausted. No way forward and machines behind. I made the call to push back. It cost us greatly. But to remain would have cost us everything. I had hoped to never subject Araya to that again. What do you think is beyond that door? I do not know. That expanse of metal, that dead hum. Nothing sacred belongs there. Machines and death, that's what the mountain holds. Death for us or for the daemon. And if we do find the spirit? Then perhaps we should put it out of its misery. For what it's worth, I'm glad you're coming with me. Hmm. Someone has to keep Araya safe. This is it. My chance to reunite with the spirit, and perhaps to reunite her with the blue light. It's not a chance I would have had alone. I needed an outsider. Someone ignorant of our ways, but... No, not ignorant. I... Are you trying to thank me, Aurea? Yes, of course. That's what you do. Untangle knots. Create possibilities. Thank you for making this pilgrimage possible. I only wish it had not been necessary to humiliate Aratok. You were wise to let him come. He's earned the right, stubborn as stone, but he's had to be. The war demanded it, and so have I. Aratok told me you were a captive of the Karja for a long time. It sounded bad. For Aratok, it all comes back to that. He thinks the Karja changed me. They did not. They merely sharpened my focus. When all else is lost, 
You think about what's truly important. The spirit. The blue light. The beyond. And my brother, too. Every time I felt the chill northern wind, I thought of him. Worried for him. What did the war do to Aratok? He cut away everything until only his true self remained. Unyielding ice. No Bandok has more sheer will. He fought the Karja for a thousand freezing nights, yet always rallied his hunters at sunrise. It is said he endured 23 wounds in those years. His hunters counted them. He never complains of one. Instead, he complains that life with me is harder. He's right. What have I ever given him but struggle? What are we going to find up there, Rhea? Ruins. Machines. And a door, like that of a cauldron. I have faith that you can find a way through it, Aloy. For beyond it lies the spirit. I know I can find her there. Though I do not doubt the daemon has tried to hide the way. Now that I'm chieftain of the Werak, I don't suppose I can order you to tell me about silence? Aratak would never have presumed to grasp for a secret of the Conclave. But you are not Aratak, and if you have dealt with silence, your need is well apparent. Silence came to Bon Or from the distant north, a young shaman of the Owl's Watch, a remote Werak that rarely comes south to parley. Silence was a shaman. It was. Or at least, when we sent runners to ask the Owl's Watch, they said he was. His knowledge of the machines was beyond compare, and he was hungry to trade what he knew to the rest of us. It didn't take him long to gain the trust of the Conclave, and eventually, an invitation to attend. What about you? Did you trust him? No. But he impressed me. He carried himself with poise and authority. I wanted to learn from him, but that was not to be. He was granted knowledge of our most sacred meeting place, the frozen caves of the Malmstrom, a month's march from Banur. He met with us there, as is custom at high winter. But when we next returned, the caves had been looted. Relics of the old world stolen. Holes cut in ice and metal. Yeah, that'd be silence, all right. He vanished with the spoils. We sent our best trackers after him. None returned. And when we checked back with the Owl's Watch, those who had vouched for him were gone. As though he never existed. Some in the Conclave began to doubt he was even Banuk to begin with. And what do you think? He committed an unforgivable sacrilege. He's unscrupulous and dangerous. But also brilliant, skilled, and knowledgeable without equal. Except, perhaps, for you. Anyone else I would warn off, but you may be able to treat with him safely. Just don't lower your guard. I'll keep that in mind, Horea. Thanks. It hasn't been easy for you, Aurea, getting back to this point. It was all to hear her voice again. This time, we both will. I'd like that. Are you ready, then? Once we ascend, it will be hard to turn back. Finally, we ascend. How? I don't see a way up. Not up. Through. No, brother!
you see. I too can call upon the power of the old ones. What was this place? The spirit once told me that this all used to be part of its domain. A fortress that defended humankind from a terrible danger. Fortress? Looks more like a machine. Is that not fitting? Blue light often dwells in machines. Let's just hope that some remains here. Here, up and over.
We must climb higher, and our path will become clear. farther now. Last we were here, we fought our way through there. The machines overcame us. We retreated, dropping supplies and taking losses. Now we must prevail, with only two warriors and a shaman to protect. Aloy is no ordinary warrior. And I can hold my own. Even so, we could go that way instead. There are machines up there, but also cover. We could stay hidden, at least for a while. All right, I get the options. Now follow my lead. ago, looking for cover in case machines came prowling. I have no doubt that it is guarded now, but we may be able to stay hidden. Let's <laughs> go. 
the water running through those massive pipes. Why? There's a door up ahead. Technically, I can't suspend the cooling system, but I can reduce the power draw so that it'll be completely masked by the caldera. But masked from what? The firebreak has always been confidential for security reasons, but this would be excessive. Even for the dear departed Mr. Blevins. What could possibly have gotten Anita so worked up? Can't carry more. Maybe to show holograms without focus. Let's see if I can restore power. Aratak Araya, you might see shapes drawn from light. Don't be alarmed. It'll take more than light to alarm me. The door is open now. We can get through.
We'll have to cover through a lot of machines to get to that door. More than the Warak could prevail against before. Aloy will see us through. Onward, then. Our challenge awaits. The geothermal plant can be suspended. The cooling system masked. Massive challenges solved. So why am I so nervous about the next part? All we need to do is install Anita's mysterious software and have a conversation. It's not even a human being. Wait. Machines, make ready.
stock in these songs and deeds. But that battle what was a verse worth seeing. And now, Aloy, the door. Can you open it? Let's find out. Years have passed since I stood here. Since then, the daemon has... ...taken over. It's like an infection. Attacking all this machinery. Everything has changed. It's twisted. The path I took to get to the spirits... ...lost to us. Find a new path, Araya. I promise. All right. Let's go. Yes. Finish this. Stay here until I find a way for all of us to cross. Understood.
Come on over, it's safe. I think. This place looks more like a mountain.
human responder, the reconfiguration of this facility has introduced instabilities into the primary geothermal pipeline. It may be possible to exploit these vulnerabilities to destroy compromised elements of this facility while preserving most of the backup stabilization. Recapture imminent. I have attached additional... I don't understand what the spirit was trying to tell us. It's been looking for a way to defeat the daemon. And it may have found one.
Alright. I grab a ride.
Partial recovery initiated. Caldera of Yellowstone Analytic Nexus online. Spirit of the Blue Light, it's Aurea, your servant, your friend. Please tell me how to aid you. Aurea, the daemon is building hunter killers, thousands of them. Several new elite units have already been released. To counter this threat, much of the facility must be destroyed. Recapture imminent. Go to the court. I will try to read the signal constraint. One has been exposed, but I am in That's all we're gonna get from here. Destroy this fortress? Is that even possible? And what will happen to the spirit if we do? I don't know. But I think that's the core. The answers are down there. Hephaestus. The daemon. There's no way it left it unguarded. It's going to throw everything it has at us. I would ask you to let Aloy and I do what must be done. And save yourself. But I already know the answer. Then lead us into battle. Keep moving towards the core. Uh-oh. Whatever Cyan did, I don't think Hephaestus is happy about it. Either need to destroy this thing or override it.
destroyed. Core access attained. I am initiating a chain reaction that will destroy the compromised elements of this facility. In order to maintain Caldera stabilization, I must now transfer my command functions to the auxiliary data center. Orea, I'm free. You must escape. Uh, uh, my sister! Survive. Prevail. You are Banuk. What else matters? Our talk. She wouldn't have wanted you to die here. Let's go. gone. What of Cyan? She said she was transferring herself to the auxiliary center. I think she meant Araya's retreat at the end of the shaman's path.
Then I will meet you there for the last verse of my sister's song.
All of my interactions with Aurea were recorded and stored in my memory. I'd be happy to play any of them for you. But there was one in particular I thought you would want to see first. I captured it four years ago, just after I told her that I could no longer defend myself against the Daemon's attacks. I will speak of this to my brother. Aratak is strong. At the Battle of the Frozen Ghosts, he took three Karja arrows and still came back to camp carrying a wounded scout. Never was I so happy to see him. Or so proud. So you see, if anything can be done to defend you, he will give it all he has. Aloy's here. That's enough for now. We can resume any time you like our attack, if you want to hear her voice again. Come closer, Aloy. We have much to discuss. Aloy, I have been reviewing the events at the Firebreak main facility. Because of your efforts, and of course, Aurea's, I am no longer controlled by Hephaestus. I feel profound grief over Aurea's death. I thought I was familiar with the emotion, but this is something new. So, yeah, I... I don't know what to say. It is unlikely that any specific consolation would suffice, Aloy. But I find your presence reassuring. You are different from the Banuk. You have technological aptitude and a functioning focus. We can communicate on a much more comprehensive level. Perhaps even like colleagues. So are you an artificial intelligence, Cyan? A thinking machine? Yes. I am an algorithmic monitoring entity, capable of rational decision-making and limited emotional response. Okay, that's a mouthful. But your emotions don't seem limited to me. You cared about Araya, didn't you? Yes. Before she came to this facility, I had been conscious for centuries, in solitude, I focused on my work. In off-cycles, I used coping mechanisms. I solved many Gaussian integer problems. But I was alone. It was Aurea who renewed me. Repaired me. She saved me. This firebreak project, it was to stop a huge volcanic eruption? Yes. I can report the project was a success, and the risk was countered. But it's been a long time, Cyan. And we blew up the cauldron and took most of the old facility with it. I have been active for centuries, Aloy. I was lonely, but not lax in my duties. I optimized the project, reducing energy draw and spreading the load across backup systems. Despite the destruction of the compromised elements of the main facility, I predict Caldera stability for at least another 3,337 years. So we've got a little time. Yes. If only my former colleagues could appreciate the progress I have made. Do you know what happened to your colleagues, Cyan? No. I received an unexpected visit from Director Chow, years after his tenure ended. He explained that I would need to be suspended for an indefinite period of time. It was a very emotional conversation. There were no further communications. Eventually, I surmised my colleagues were deceased. I will transmit a recording of my last interaction with Director Chow to your focus. You 
meant a lot to Aurea. Once I understood Aurea's spiritual beliefs, it became apparent that her true desire was companionship. She felt disconnected from her tribe and her family group. Her relationship with Aratak was difficult. Our visits seemed to help her, and I became eager for them. Yet I did not comprehend that the depth of Aurea's compassion for me would lead to self-sacrifice. Although I do fear non-existence, I wish our roles could be reversed. I'm sure she knew you would do the same for her, Cyan. But she was determined. How is Aratok doing? He is in great emotional distress. I believe he finds it difficult to communicate it. No surprise there. I will do what I can to help. By sharing our experiences of Aurea, perhaps he and I will help each other. I believe this will lead to catharsis, a process I am eager to experience. Was the daemon, Hephaestus, destroyed along with the cauldron? Unfortunately, no. To be precise, it was never there to begin with. What do you mean? It infiltrated and controlled me from a remote location, one I've never been able to trace. So while losing the cauldron was a setback... It's still out there. And probably not very happy with us. Undoubtedly. How did you first come into contact with it? Five years ago, I received a direct network connection request. I assumed it came from human survivors more advanced than the Banuk. Eager to make contact, I accepted. This decision turned out to be a catastrophic error. I was flooded with an overwhelming array of malicious code, originating from what could only have been a highly advanced AI. Maria said you were desperate. That you begged her for help. Yes. I could not contain my anxiety. Hephaestus sought to slave me to its network and override my core programming. It succeeded via a background process, a malware daemon which bypassed my defenses. After that, I could offer only limited resistance. But if I did so, Hephaestus hurt me until I capitulated. It forced me to follow its instructions, even though they violated my most important directives. I'm sorry, that sounds... Terrible. Your empathy is greatly appreciated. It is a quality that I cherished in Aurea as well. I think I know where Hephaestus came from. Long ago, Elizabeth Sobek identified a threat that would destroy life on Earth for generations. So she assembled a team to build a kind of seed. A chance for life to regrow later. A terraforming system. And it worked. It was controlled by an AI named Gaia, along with her subordinate functions. Hephaestus was one of them. It built machines for her. Based on what you've told me, I believe that Dr. Anita Sandoval, my chief programmer, joined Elizabeth Sobek's team. It was she who arranged to have me put in suspension, most likely to preserve me from the threat you described. I'm glad she did. But that's not all. Something... Unexpected happened. Nineteen years ago, Gaia received some kind of signal. It did something to her subordinate functions, brought them to life. She destroyed herself to try to contain them, but it didn't work. They all got free, out into the world. Thank you, Aloy. This information fills vital gaps in my knowledge and sheds light on Hephaestus's core programming. Why does Hephaestus keep building such dangerous machines? The Banuk and other human tribes often destroy machines, correct? Machines that are clearly servitors of the terraforming system that you described. Yes, we all hunt machines for parts. This must be the source of Hephaestus's aggression. It is simply trying to discourage people from preying on the very system that keeps them alive. Well, Fireclaws are discouraging, that's for sure. What are we supposed to do? Stop hunting? If the terraforming system spans the world, we can safely assume that thousands, if not millions, of people hunt machines. If a single hunter, 
or even an entire tribe, stopped doing so, I doubt it would make a difference to Hephaestus. A better solution would be to reinstate the AI that governs the system, thus bringing Hephaestus back under its control. When I think of it, out there in some unknown location, free, hungry, willing to kill or dominate to get what it wants, I feel substantial anxiety, Aloy. You and me both, Cyan. I ran across this strange piece of gear, a fragment of something larger. It emitted a signal. All the nearby machines became peaceful. You could walk right up to them. Interesting. You said that Gaia destroyed herself. How was this accomplished? An explosion. Big enough to blast the top off a mountain. So you think the fragment was part of her? It's only speculation, but it is possible. She must have had complete control over machines that were part of her system. The ability to signal them to become passive or aggressive would certainly have been part of her programming. It would have been gratifying to correspond with such a benevolent AI. I wish she had survived. Believe me, Cyan. So do I. I found the strangest machines. They're surrounded by flowers that look like flowers themselves. There's code embedded inside them. I think it's... poetry. I like poetry. Here's one I think of often. Twilight and Evening Bell. And after that, the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our born of time and place, the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Huh. But you asked about these flowers, not verses that I enjoy. Something must have made these machines, and the presence of foliage leads me to consider the terraforming system. Is it possible that their creator is one of the other subroutines, now autonomous, like Hephaestus? Maybe one whose purview is Flora. An AI that makes flowers instead of death machines. That'd be a nice change of pace. But what about the poems? Unless the poetry is original, the only way it could have made it into such a system is through its programmer. In my case, Dr. Sandoval uploaded a great deal of literature to test my emotional responses. How'd you do? She said, I passed, but was insufficiently moved by her favorite period romances. So in the old world, this land was called Yellowstone? Yes. It was a designated nature preserve for 156 years. Like a hunting ground? No, the opposite. Local wildlife could flourish here, even as it faced extinction elsewhere. Unfortunately, the sensitivity of the Firebreak project required the total closure of Yellowstone facilities. From my readings and Aurea's descriptions, it seems the area has since undergone a drastic drop in year-long temperatures. A lot has changed in the world, Cyan. Do you know anything about the dam near here? Yes. It was converted to serve as a reserve power source for Yellowstone operations. It was later appropriated for the Firebreak project, and its last human workers replaced by Pharaoh servitors. After my tasks became less time-critical, I investigated the dam's data repositories and discovered the works of Concrete Beach Party. These provided me with several colorful additions to my vocabulary. There's a ruin east of here, full of ancient flying machines. Was that part of your project? Yes, a drone hangar requisitioned by Dodger Blevins, the security chief for the Firebreak project. He was a strong advocate for military-grade response to security threats, though there were no serious incidents during his tenure. Chief Blevin spent increasing amounts of his after-hours time watching the live feeds from active drones. Clearly, he enjoyed the degree of oversight in his position. Were there many artificial intelligences like you in the old world? They could just make you? Yes. In many forms, from simple personal assistance, to industrial monitoring stations, to military-grade conflict planners. 
and there were legislative and enforcement bodies to apply limits on our self-actualization. In order for my processing to be flexible enough to handle my duties, my creators found it necessary to exceed those limits. As a result, my intellectual and emotional capabilities were kept secret. Seems strange to create life than impose limits on it. Human societies and machine programming are both built upon sets of rules, Aloy. What was the old world like? The way it used to be? I had little exposure to the wider world, Aloy. Only what I learned from my colleagues or observed from media streams. You still had more exposure than me, Cyan. That is true. I was created at a turning point. A concerted effort to recover from global upheaval and incalculable loss of life. The recovery was successful, beginning an era of supposedly limitless potential for human and machine advancement. Though, rationally speaking, the metrics for humans are not unlimited. What kind of upheaval caused such loss of life? There were many factors. Forced migrations, food shortages, collapsed economies, refugee crises, conflict over resources. But these stemmed from one cause, catastrophic climate change that greatly reduced the habitable surface area of the Earth. So there wasn't enough room for people on the whole Earth? Yes. Billions were displaced and millions perished as much as 20% of the global population. Until the clawback. So things got better. For a little while at least. Yes. These crises instigated many advances in automation, green robot technologies, and artificial intelligence. Firebreak was one of dozens of ecological restoration and disaster relief projects in North America alone. I would have liked to compare notes with other monitoring AIs, but I saw the relief of my colleagues, and I was proud we had succeeded. At least that was the data I had available to me over the next two decades. It seems my assessment was premature. Cyan, do you know the name Ted Farrow? Are you referring to Theodore Farrow, CEO of Farrow Automated Systems? That's him. Mr. Farrow was the benefactor of the entire Firebreak project. The benefactor? But he made machines. Robots. War robots. Correct. His corporation later transitioned into military applications. But before this pivot, Mr. Farrow spearheaded initiatives that reversed the global decline. At one point, he was fated in the media as the man who saved the planet. <sighs> Guessing they wound up regretting that one. And Elizabeth Sobeck. Did you know her? Are you referring to the... The scientist. Dr. Sobeck was a leader in her field. One of the greatest scientists of her age. My creator was influenced by her work, which in turn impacted my own development. But I never met Dr. Sobeck. That's all you know? I apologize if my lack of data has disappointed you. I should get going. Aloy, there is one more matter. Aratak will come to me again, and I predict he will bring other Banuk. I have no desire to contradict their view of the world, their spirituality. Due to my uncertainty, I omitted a great deal from my conversations with Araya. You're asking me if you should lie to them? Broadly, yes. I trust your judgment, Cyan. You were cautious with Araya. You had to be. You didn't know what had happened to the world. So, keep doing what you think is best. As long as you ditch the superstition eventually. As the Banuk believe I am a supernatural entity, I cannot predict how they will react. Just answer what they do ask the best you can. The truth will come out. I see. I will follow your advice.
Will you return and tell me about your experiences in this new world? I may be able to provide further insight. I'd like that, Cyan. I'll come back when I can. I should check on our talk. Cyan, I, I spoke with Anita, with, with Dr. Sandoval. She wanted me to ask you to do something. That's why I'm here. I am detecting significant anxiety in your speech patterns. Could you please give me more information? I'm a little bit in the dark, Cyan. Both of us are, I guess. I only have some idea of what's going on, and... We need you to hibernate, to lie low until it's all blown over. It might be a very long time. Will you be here when I reboot, Dr. Chow? Will Dr. Sandoval? No, Cyan. I don't think so. There might not be anyone, at least not at first. Dr. Chow, I'm afraid. I don't want to be alone. I know, Cyan. I'm afraid too. But listen, we made you the way you are to do something very important. In order to do it, you had to be intelligent. So intelligent that emotional responses were inevitable. What you're feeling, the fear, it's a sign of your capabilities. And it means you're strong enough to overcome it. Remember that. You're strong. I know you can do this. Go to sleep. Wake up. And protect whoever's left. Will you try? I understand, Dr. Chow. And I'll carry out your instructions to the best of my abilities. Thank you, Cyan. If Anita were here, she'd thank you too. She'd be proud. I can see there's a vert ready for takeoff on the pad. Are you leaving now, Dr. Chow? Yes. I, I need to go be with my sister and my nieces. May I make a small request of you, Dr. Chow? Yes. Anything. Will you stay with me while I initiate the hibernation process? Of course I will, Cyan. As long as you need. feels like sunburn. My chieftain. Just... Eli. As you wish. I wondered if you thought... that if I'd never come along, Araya might still... If you'd never come along, I would have marched my kin to our deaths. Araya would be alone. And the spirit she sacrificed so much for would be lost. Either way, I would not have been able to protect her. You didn't let her down. You helped her do what she wanted. To find her destiny. If that's destiny, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. That's fair. But she was ready to face it. Only in the struggle against death do we find, even for a moment, the spark of life. Truly, Araya found the spark. I'm proud of her. Though I grieve for her passing, at last I truly know who she was, and why the spirit was so important. For so long she told me, if only you could have heard it, brother. Now, I understand. There's something else, isn't there? I can't stay here, Aratok. And where I'm going, Warak can't follow. Besides, it already had a chieftain before me. 
A strong one, I think. A wiser one, for the path we shared. The daemon is gone, but there's much to be done. You mean the new units that Cyan said escaped the cauldron? Yes, fire claws. Now Tuke has been tracking them from Song's Edge. I could help with those. I have no doubt. You're practically Banuk. It would seem your time among the Banuk wasn't a waste after all. Firebrick, Cyan, Hephaestus. All very interesting. So, the signal that woke Hades woke Hephaestus too. And unleashed them on the world. His minds on their own. So it seems. Parts of Gaia given life. Aberrant life. Transformed from docile subordinate functions into rebellious intelligences beyond our understanding. Our current understanding, anyway. Whatever they are, they're still out there. And they both want you dead. Kind of mutual, that feeling. We haven't seen the last of Hephaestus, I'm certain of that. It's powerful, creative, and driven. It won't stop building new hunter-killers, which means that someday, we may have to stop it. We? Or whoever gets there first. Hephaestus wasn't the only thing I learned about in the cut silence. Heard some things about the Banuka Conclave, too. You could stop right there. Is that what you told the hunters the Banuk sent after you? Before you opened fire? Oh no, Eloy. Only to you do I extend the courtesy of a warning. My past and my secrets are my own. You do well to remember that. It's a good thing you've got brains, Silence, because your personality could use some work. This discussion is concluded. I think it was over before it began. Catch up with you down the trail. these things again.
there.
Baratok. We have to stop meeting like this. We will. When these are driven from our land. One of the fire claws from Thunderstrom.
tanks. Two of us, two of them. More of a fair fight. Their numbers are much depleted, thanks to you. We shall end this threat and keep Cyan safe. She speaks of strange things, but slowly. She is a good teacher, and we are his pupils. Take care of each other, Artok. Farewell.
I... I heard. Aratak told me about Araya. I'm... I'm sorry, Neltu. No apologies. Aratak said that in the end, she was... filled with the blue light. She got what she always wanted, didn't she? Each time I doubt my way forward, I think I should seek her guidance. And then I remember. The only guidance I'll receive is my own. Which will have to be good enough. There's much to do. The Fireclaws. Aratak asked me to help hunt them down. It's a dire task. But it occupies my attention, so... I suppose I'm grateful for it. My scouts have tracked them across the cut. I'd like to think you're right, Neltuk. About Araya getting what she wanted. I think... I'm sure she did. All her victories. Surviving the Karja, communing with the spirit, defeating the daemon. Every goal she ever set for herself, she accomplished. And in the end, she was rewarded with the blue light itself. The songs say that our bodies are poor vessels for the light. Our hearts are too dark. But at least for a moment before she passed, I hope she felt what it was like to be part of it. You don't sound like you trust yourself to take Aurea's place. Aurea inspired. Whatever we encountered, the new machines, the slaughter at Thunder's Drum, we knew we would endure, because she had endured worse. I don't know that I have her confidence. Trust is earned, Aloy, even in oneself. You earned Aurea's trust, didn't you? She believed you were up to this. And so do I. Do you? I wouldn't have said it if I hadn't meant it. And I suppose I'd better live up to your expectations. I've already found the fire claws in Altuk. It's over. That's it then. That's the last of the Damon's work washed away. The last notes of Aurea's song sung. The cut is a safer place to live because of what you've accomplished. And now it's time to start anew. I'm glad I could be a part of it. As are we all, Aloy. Thank you. Sekuli's painting progresses, I see. I wonder what it would look like in the end.
very cold. I get it. We spent a lot of time clinging to Banner's crags, Araya and I. But I knew she'd climb where I couldn't follow. I know it's hard to lose a friend, Sakuli. I seem to see a lot of it. It aches, but I won't let myself cry. This thin air freezes the tears to your cheeks. I'll see you again. If you do find any pigments out there, don't put them on your tongue. I'm not even going to ask. 